Here we're gonna look at a nice traditional Japanese geometry problem. This is from the Shugawara tablet. And I should say this is a pure coincidence, but there's something called the Shugawara construction from theoretical physics or mathematics, specifically the field of vertex operator algebras, which I'm making another playlist about if you guys are interested in that. Okay, so let's look at the game here. We've got this large equilateral triangle with side length capital A. Inscribed in that, we have this tower of three squares. So the topmost square has side length one, the next one has side length A, and the next one has side length B. And then next, inside of this bottom square with side length B, we have inscribed a circle. And then inside that circle, we have an equilateral inscribed with side length C. And finally, inside that equilateral triangle, we have another circle inscribed with radius R. And so our goal is to find A, B, C, R and capital A. And we can express those just as numbers because we've assumed up here that this has side length one. Okay, so let's maybe get to it. So I'm gonna do it in this order. I'll find little a, little b, a, and then we'll work on C and R kind of at the same time. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do is introduce a new length here and that will be X. And that's this little bit here, which hangs off the side of our small square. And maybe the first thing that I want to notice is that if I take 2x plus 1, I get a. So that's pretty clear because if I go across this length, I can measure it two different ways. I can either measure it as going x plus 1 plus x, or all the way across is a. And then furthermore, since this is an equilateral triangle, we know that this is angle measure 60 degrees or pi over three. And then since this pink line is parallel to this white line down here, this angle measure here is also pi over three. So now we can take the cotangent of that in order to calculate x. So notice the cotangent of pi over three will be equal to x over one or just x. So let's maybe put also cotangent of pi over three equals x over one because that's adjacent over opposite. Okay, great, but now let's recall that the cotangent is equal to one over the square root of three or the square root of three over three, and the cotangent of pi over three is that I, sh I should say. So now that gives us all the information we need in order to calculate A. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. So we have A equals two root three over three plus one. So in other words, that's gonna be three plus two root three over three, once giving ourselves a common denominator. Okay, so let's maybe keep a list of everything over here. So I'll just go ahead and write A is equal to three plus two times the square root of three over three. And there's our first value. Okay, so now let's move on to calculating our second value, and we're gonna do that pretty similarly. So I'm gonna make this little length right here be y. This little length right here is also y because of the way that this is constructed. And notice I'm going to have y plus a plus y is equal to b. So in other words, I have 2y plus a equals b. But now I can similarly calculate y using this cotangent because I have the same angle right here. So notice since this yellow line is parallel to this white line down here, we know that this angle right here is congruent to this angle down here, which is pi over three. Then we can use trigonometry again to say that the cotangent of pi over three is going to be equal to y over a. So in other words, y over a is equal to root three over three, which tells us that y is equal to a times root three over three. Okay, great. So now let's see what that gives us. 
that tells us that B is equal to 2A root 3 over 3 plus A. In other words, it's going to be equal to 2 root 3 plus 3 over 3 times A. But now we can pretty easily calculate that because we've got a value for A. So notice that that means B is equal to, so we actually have the same thing in the numerator for each one. So this is gonna be three plus two root three squared over nine. But now we can FOIL this numerator out and we'll see that we get nine plus 12. So that's gonna be three times three plus two root three times two root three and then we'll have two times the cross terms. So we'll have 12 times root three. So plus 12 times root three, and this is gonna be all over nine. Now the next thing that I wanna notice is I can take this, add them together to get 21, and then factor a three out of the numerator and cancel it with a three in the denominator, keeping in mind that nine is three times three, and that's gonna give us seven plus four times the square root of three over three. So that's our value for B. So let's maybe go ahead and collect that over here. So we have B equals seven plus four root three over three. Great. Now maybe I'll go ahead and erase this, leave my solutions over there and we'll calculate capital A next. Okay, so now let's get to calculating this capital A. In other words, the side length of the outside equilateral triangle. We're gonna do this essentially the same way we calculated little a and little b. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this value right here z. And then once I know that that is z, I can calculate the length of this outside equilateral triangle two different ways, either by z plus b plus z, or knowing that it's capital A. So in other words, I have capital A equals 2Z plus B. You know, just like before. And then next, I can take the cotangent of pi over three, and that's going to be equal to Z over B. So let's maybe do that. Recall that cotangent of pi over three was equal to root three over three. And like I said, that is Z over B. So that tells us that z is equal to root three over three times b. Now let's see, we can add all of these together now. We have a equals two root three over three plus one times b. But now I can rewrite this as two root three plus three over three times b. Great. But now I have a value from B for B over there. I have the seven plus four root three over three. So let's maybe put that in here. Seven plus four root three over three. And now we can go ahead and FOIL this out. So notice that's gonna give us a nine in the denominator. And then let's see, we'll have 21 from uh, seven times three plus, so we're gonna have four times two, that'll give us eight times three, so that'll give us 24 from the root three times root three. And then let's see, what are our root three terms? So we'll have 14 root three plus 12 root three. So that's gonna give us 26 times the square root of three. Now notice we can combine these together into 45, but there's no simplification that can happen because three is the only divisor of nine, but that doesn't go into 26. But we've got a value for A. So let's maybe go ahead and collect that over here. We have A equals 45 plus 26 root three over nine. Great. And now we're ready to move on to find some values of C and R. But I'll go ahead and clean up the board before we do that. Now we wanna find C, the side length of this green equilateral triangle. So I've brought the blue circle and the green equilateral triangle up here so we have a little bit more room with it. Maybe the first thing that I wanna notice is we know the radius of this blue circle. The radius of this blue circle is B over two. So I'm gonna draw a radius the following orientation. So it's gonna go from there to here. So that's gonna be the in center of the circle. Like I said, we know that this has length B over two. 
And then since this is the end center of the circle, and we know this is an equilateral triangle, this angle is 60 degrees. That makes this angle right here 30 degrees or pi over six. Okay, now the next thing that I wanna do is drop a perpendicular line down to there. And we know that this length right here will be length C over two. And we know that because um, it's half the length of the side of the triangle. So next we're gonna use some trigonometry to calculate C in terms of B. So we know that cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So that means we know that cosine of pi over six is going to be equal to C over two over B over two. In other words, that's C over B. But now notice that that tells us that C is equal to B times cosine of pi over six but then we know cosine of pi over six is root three over two, so we get that c is equal to b times the square root of three over two. In other words, it's the square root of three over two times seven plus four square root of three over three. So now we can go ahead and simplify that. So notice that's gonna give us a six in the denominator to start with. Then we're gonna have root three times root three is three times four is 12. Um, plus seven root three. But there's no simplification that can be done to that. So we've got a value for C. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that down. C is equal to 12 plus seven root three all over six. So the last thing we need to do is calculate R. So I'll go ahead and clean that up and then we'll do that. So now we're ready to finish this off. We've got values for little a, little b, capital A, and little c. Now we wanna find the radius of this inner purple triangle. So I've brought this equilateral triangle with side length c and this inner purple triangle out and I've drawn it up here so that we can work a little bit more cleanly with it. Great, so I'm just gonna go ahead and point out that this is side length c. Now the next thing that I wanna do is draw a radius in this purple circle in a way so that I can easily calculate that radius in terms of C. And I think the best way to do it is to write the radius like this. So just straight down so that we get a perpendicular angle right there. Great, and so now notice we know that this is length R but then, since this is the end center of the circle, and this is gonna be perpendicular to our side, which is at the bottom, we know that this over here is length C over two. Then next, we can draw a hypotenuse like this, and we will see that this has angle pi over six. Again, since this is the end center, we know that this bisects this angle of measure pi over three, so that's gonna be pi over six. Now we can use some trigonometry. We can take the tangent of pi over six, and we'll see that we get opposite over adjacent, so that's gonna be r over c over two. But now we can use the fact that the value of tangent of pi over six is root three over three to build the equation root three over three equals 2r over c. And that can be easily solved for r. So we have r equals root three over six times c. But we already calculated the value of c over there. So we have root three over six times 12 plus seven root three over six. So let's see what that gives us. So we will have a 36 in the denominator, and then we'll have 12 times the square root of three plus, so root three times root three is three times seven is 21. Great. And then finally, we can factor a three out of the 21, the 12, and the 36 to cancel, and we'll get seven plus four root three over 12. And that's a nice final value for R. So we've got R equals seven plus four root three over 12. So we found all of the values that we were going for, and that's a good place to stop.